The Cinema 70S, the little sibling of Marantz's new cinema line, but I think it's one of the best seven channel AVRs on the market today. Why? Well, let's talk about it. No beating around the proverbial bush, let's begin with some specs. The Cinema 70S is a slim profile 7.2 channel AVR. It produces 50 watts per channel into 8 ohms with two channels driven. Right off the bat, that wattage number might be reason enough to wrinkle your nose at it and look elsewhere. But stick with me here, if you've been following this channel at all, you might be anticipating why 50 watts per channel in my mind is completely arbitrary and might as well not mean a darn thing at all. Moving on, like with any Marantz AVR, it supports Dolby Atmos and DTSX, but given that it's only a 7 channel AVR, it does come equipped with Dolby Atmos Height Virtualization and DTS Virtual X to create three dimensional effects even without actual speakers mounted up high, say if you wanted to have seven ear level speakers surrounding your listening position. It has Odyssey multi Q auto room correction, built in Wi Fi, Heos tech for seamless whole home music listening with any Heos compatible devices, works with Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant if you like to control your system with the sound of your voice, Apple AirPlay 2, Bluetooth tech including the ability to send audio to a pair of wireless Bluetooth headphones, and a Zone 2, say if you want a 5.1 setup in your main room and a 2 channel setup in another room. For your future proofing needs, the Cinema 70S has HDMI 2.1 connections, a total of 6 HDMI inputs with 3 of those inputs, and the main HDMI output supporting 8K 60 and 4K 120Hz for your next-gen gaming consoles like a PS5 and Xbox Series X, as well as support for gaming features like variable refresh rate, auto low latency, and quick frame transport. The other three HDMI inputs support up to 4K 60Hz. HDCP 2.3 tech also helps with future proofing, and when it comes to HDR, it supports HDR10, HDR10+, Dolby Vision, and HLG. And lastly, with gaming consoles, or if you prefer to use your own smart TV's apps, it supports eARC to send higher bandwidth audio codecs like Dolby Atmos from your TV back to your AVR and out to your immersive audio speakers. But it wouldn't be Marantz without some bonus features for better music listening applications like TuneIn Internet Radio, Spotify Connect, Pandora, Sirius XM, and a myriad of streaming services like Amazon Music HD, Tidal, even SoundCloud. And lastly, it has been Rune tested but it is not in fact a rune player on its own for all of you rune heads out there is that even a thing rune heads runies whatever finishing off with the backside it does have high quality five-way binding posts for speaker connections Ethernet for a more reliable internet connection, digital inputs like coax and optical, a phono input to connect a turntable, including moving magnet varieties, AM FM radio, RCA inputs for perhaps a CD player, and my personal favorite section, a full set of pre outs. In 2023, this and the Cinema 60 are literally the only new 7 channel AVRs on the market with this feature. Every other 7 channel AVR has a pre out section solely comprised of two subwoofer outputs, maybe a zone 2 output, but that's it. So with that being said, we might as well get right into how this baby sounds, am I right? I've been using an IOTA AVX-17 for the past year. So when you go from a dedicated preamp with external amps back to a 7 channel AVR, it hits different, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but because I currently have some monster ear level speakers in my theater right now, in order to get the best out of them, I didn't even bother with the internal amps because 50 watts per channel into 8 ohms with two channels driven is just not enough, plain and simple. But as I stated previously, that number means nothing to me since I prefer to use external amps whenever possible in order to allow my AVR to process audio to its fullest potential. Removing the task of powering your speakers and reassigning that job to external amps should be the ultimate goal of any home theater enthusiast or hi-fi music lover. Having all that contained within a single chassis is convenient in a pinch, but separating those tasks to different components will yield much better results. For example, back in high school when I had no money, but wanted a stereo system in my bedroom, my dad opted to get me an all-in-one Iowa stereo system, complete with a three-disc CD changer and dual cassette deck. Yes, I know saying CD changer and cassette deck in the same breath is a dead giveaway on how old I am, but 
Nonetheless, obviously having a separate preamp and tuner, amplifier, CD player, and cassette deck would have been ideal. But I just couldn't afford to go that route as a punk teenager. But as I said a minute ago, I was used to the aggressive and dynamic qualities of the IOTA AVX-17. So when I hooked up the Cinema 70S to my system, with the speakers being powered by my Outlaw Model 7000X amplifier, I noticed a much warmer sounding tonality. The aggressive details and sharpness of the IOTA had been smooth out with the Cinema 70S. A little more buttery with the highs not being as pronounced as the IOTA, but still a wild ride when watching my go-to testing demos like the race in Ready Player One, the intro to Mad Max Fury Road, and the Battle of Pelennor Fields from Return of the King. Bass response gelled nicely with the seven ear level speakers. Although the Cinema 70S being the little sibling does not get the same treatment as its bigger siblings, namely how it has no support for independent subwoofer channels like the Cinema 50, for example. It also does not support IMAX enhanced or RO3D if that's important to you. I gotta say though, I am a fan of Sound United's new graphic interface. It is clean, easier to read and understand with the icons and graphical choices. It's even a little more customizable being being able to make assignments to certain features or channels easier when it might have been a little too confusing or buried a little too deep in the menu system in previous versions. But what remains true with any Marantz AVR compared to its similar Denon counterpart, since they are both owned and operated by Sound United, is that this is for those who are going to use this AVR for both movie and TV watching, but also listening to music. Marantz products are known for their musicality, and this reigns true for the Cinema 70S as well. I I don't have a dedicated CD player anymore and haven't actually owned one for a couple of decades at this point, which having said that out loud kind of blows my mind. But regardless, what I've recently started to do when testing out music is bust out my old CD collection from the 90s and early 2000s and play it through my LG UBK 94K Blu-ray player. And when I put the Marantz into pure direct mode, telling the AVR to do none of the processing, leaving that task solely up to the LG player, Streaming music over Apple AirPlay is convenient and great, don't get me wrong, but when U2 wrote the lyrics even better than the real thing, they weren't actually testing physical media through a home theater system because there is something unmatched about the pure 44.1 kilohertz 16-bit quality of a physical CD, even when compared to a lossless version on Apple Music. Granted, it could just be a placebo effect happening, yearning for the days of yore. But the combination of a tangible CD being played through an LG UBK90, the Cinema 70S in pure direct mode, the Outlaw Model 7000X powering my monster Aperion Audio Concert VAT towers is a tour de force of separate components working in tandem to make a magical musical listening experience. If I could take a time machine and show my high school self what I had been missing out resorting to that Iowa all-in-one stereo system, I would have started my separate component hi-fi journey a long time ago. So yes, while the Cinema 70S may not have the most power or bells and whistles as its bigger siblings, it is geared for those who plan on splitting their time between watching movies and TV and listening to two-channel music equally. If you're going to be watching mostly movies and TV shows, might as well go for the Denon equivalent, plain and simple. But Moran's products are specifically targeted at music lovers who happen to also love good immersive audio while watching movies. Lastly, there is one thing that I don't agree with. The price. I understand it's a fairly new product with quality internal components geared towards music and movie lovers, but $1,200 for a 7.2 channel AVR that doesn't even support IMAX enhanced or RO3D or independent subwoofers or only 50 watts per channel with two channels driven? Again, 50 watts per channel means nothing to someone like me who is guaranteed to use an external amp, given that it has a full set of preouts. By the way, I am so stoked that this is even offered in 2023, but in this era of emergency, immersive audio gaining popularity and people investing more in home theaters than ever before, $1,200 is pretty steep for a system that can only reach up to seven ear level speakers or perhaps a baseline 5.1.2 immersive audio configuration. You can get a nine channel Onkyo 7100 for $899. Sure, it doesn't have the full set of preouts for future expansion, but the 7100 is THX certified and does support IMAX enhanced and has direct live built in. The newest line of Denon and Marantz AVRs are direct live ready, but you have to purchase a separate software license to get it. Oh, 
except for the Cinema 70S and Cinema 60. You can't even get direct live on them, even if you are willing to spend the extra cash. Am I glad that I can connect any external amp that my little heart desires to the Cinema 70S? You better believe it. That means I can utilize the biggest, beefiest speakers that I want, even with a budget slimline AVR. In fact, I would rather have the Cinema 70S than the Cinema 60, because they're not much different aside from the 60 having more power internally, a few more inputs on the back, including legacy inputs for older components, two HDMI outputs instead of just one. But those extra bits just aren't that important to me personally. It's just the full set of pre-outs that I gravitate towards. But with everything else that's been stripped away to help save the consumer money with the Cinema 70S, I think $899 would be a more competitive price, to be honest. Marantz is leaning a little too heavily on brand loyalty to continue to sell the Cinema 70S at $1,200 because it sounds amazing, especially with music. So instead of scaring away general consumers who might not be all that familiar with the Marantz name with the $1,200 price tag, considering that you can get the incredible nine channel Onkyo RZ50 for only $100 more when it's on sale or a Denon X3700H nine channel AVR on eBay for the same price, I'm thinking $899 would invite those maybe not having Marantz on their radar to possibly switch to Marantz. Because once consumers hear what I've heard over the past couple of weeks while reviewing this, maybe the 70S would begin their journey as being Marantz loyalists from that moment forward. Nowadays, manufacturers need to realize that a 7.2 channel AVR is no longer anyone's end game. It is merely a stepping stone, an introduction to those maybe upgrading from a soundbar before eventually eventually upgrading and moving on to a 9-channel AVR and beyond. Marantz has made a great product with the 70S, but I feel like a lot of people have slept on it or overlooked it because of its price tag. That's why I wanted to review the 70S over all the other AVRs in their cinema line because it isn't getting enough buzz in my opinion. More people need to know how important it is that a compact, slimline 7.2 channel AVR has a full set of pre-outs in 2023. That's amazing! So please, Marantz, can you bring it down to $899 or thereabouts? Because way more consumers need to realize that the 70S is a viable option in their home theater journeys. Please and thank you. And now it's your turn. Do you agree with my rant about the price? Are you a Marantz loyalist who will buy any of their products no matter what? Is the fact that it has a full set of pre-outs enticing to you? Let's have a conversation in the comments below, people! As always, to keep up on all things hi-fi and audio, computers, gadgets, emerging tech, head over to eacoustics.com for so much information. And don't forget to follow us on social media for even more bite-sized content while on the go. Until next time, I'm Elon Osborne, signing off.